I actually saw there's a there's footage of inside of a black girl gamers headquarters. I'll show you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Everybody must eat. Nerderotic.com. Let's talk about gaming. <laughs> let's let's, talk, talk, let's games. talk games. Black girl gamers. Um, wow. I wonder what black girl gamers, I wonder what their interest is. I wonder what their focus oh, is. Usually. And this is talking about black girl gamers uh, threatening, threatening <laughs> um, content creators, specifically that park place, for uh, covering their uh their wow. hiring practices this is a classic uh example of uh the diversity cycle of like you don't acknowledge us acknowledge that we exist oh okay let's check out your website oh you're actually doing things that are downright racist and illegal um let's cover that oh you can't cover us don't talk about us we will <laughs> sue you for mentioning our existence what happened to wanting to be acknowledged? Right. What happened to wanting behavior. to be acknowledged? It's because um, they don't want any kind of spotlight being shined on their behavior is the reason why yeah. they don't mm. want this coverage. Exactly. To put in perspective, what happened was a couple weeks ago when a lot of this stuff was kicking off, black girl gamers went out there. They sent off a tweet about how, you know, that people are finding out, white male gamers are finding out that this thing doesn't revolve around you and blah, yeah, blah, Gaming blah. doesn't revolve around the game. You, you, all gaming you toxic gamers thought that the gaming industry revolved around <laughs> you, and now you're finding out that it doesn't. And they got ratioed beyond kind of does, they, though. They got, yeah. they, got, they got destroyed for it. They're another one of these consultancy companies like Sweet Baby Inc. However, they also do other stuff. They're like talent agencies for black women in gaming. I mean, all this shit. But uh, that Park Place, John Trent, found that in the middle of February, they tweeted out, hey, we're looking for black female uh, content creators into Dungeons and Dragons to make content for us. Let us know. Oh, yeah, it's all right. that. And obviously, they're only looking for black female content creators. So John Trent wrote an article, like, looks like they're just discriminating based on race and gender, based on who they bring into these things, because they put out a tweet that literally said they were. Yeah. And a couple weeks later, Black Girl Gamers gets very offended. I don't know why they were so late, uh, but they got very offended. Well, and my, you know, waking up we before go. noon Here is tough. I know. <laughs> and uh, and now I think Quarter Black might have the tweet to share. Here we go. Black Girl Gamers, <laughs> we're addressing the recent allegations published on thatparkplace.com about discriminatory hiring practices within Black Girl Gamers. Just, mm. Im just imagine like <laughs> typing out this sentence. We're addressing the allegations that black girl gamers might have discriminatory hiring practices <laughs> and only hire black women. How dare you think wow. that? These claims are false and were made without prior fact checking or verification mm. from us or our representatives. They go on a laundry list of things saying we've done work with contractors, done other things where we've had people that weren't black or female associated <laughs> with us. And they go we on have a white threaten. friend. They have a white friend. <laughs> <everybody>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, we have a white friend. No yeah. worries. Upon, upon discovering these <laughs> false and defamatory allegations, we have taken steps to obtain legal counsel to take mm. action against the publication and journalists, mm. as well as subsequent content creators who have reshared the false allegations about our mm. organization. We will continue to pursue further action against anyone who persists in spreading false and defamatory information about Black Girl Gamers, its founder, mm. and its contractors and partners. Mm. We value the talent and contributions of all our collaborators. We're committed to continue to do so. Thank you to our community for the ongoing support. Mm. We protected this so no one could reply because we're yes. cucks. And, yeah. probably <laughs> also and went on um, blockchains and block people. And again, mm, exactly. so re so number seven again is we will continue to pursue further action against anyone who persists in spreading false or defamatory information about black girl gamers. Um, then they they actually linked back to the website uh, that they <laughs> claim that you're not supposed to share, which mm -hmm. links you to the homepage, which that. links you to the article that they claim <laughs> no right one here. should be sharing uh, because they are idiots. It's phenomenal to watch uh, this uh, shit show play out. And it's just a small piece into a much bigger situation with the gaming industry and how it's just a sh it's a shit show everywhere. Um, you've got websites like Otaku falling apart, um, going full G4. <laughs> Polygon's doing mm -hmm. the same thing. To be fair to IGN, they've at least shifted a little bit. So they've they've shifted a little bit to get out of this, but I don't think that's I think that's temporary because IGN sucks as well. Then you got Niche Gamer who put out this really weird statement that we covered yeah. on Geeks Gamers Daily that made absolutely no sense whatsoever. Yeah. And 
I, um, I, I think said, that, access media got to access media, so we got to shut up. I think with their follow up to it, I, I I do think that we may have misinterpreted the initial statement a little bit. Mm. I think they essentially said it's unfortunate that when we talk about these things, we get punished for this. Right. And if you read it back in that context, that is kind of what they're they're not saying they're going to not cover it, because as we just showed, you know, uh, this morning, even after that statement, they published about Black Girl Gamers yeah. coming after that Barclays. Like, it's not like they're slowing down their coverage of it. Niche Gamer. They were willing to hire me as a writer till they found out the absolute wild animal I was. <laughs> And the <laughs> never-ending, <laughs> relentless trans mob that has been following me the last few years. Well, I will uh, also say that I took the time to check out some of these black girl games that were made by black women developers. And I have mm. to say, they're terrible. <laughs> Every last one of them is just worse than the next. It's all like Flash games. It's... If it isn't about hair, did it's you about check out Validate? Fat people. Oh, <laughs> Validate. Oh, yeah. We've, we've, oh, yeah. Uh, what about the former, <laughs> the former um, employee at Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, that made Validate? And she just said, Oh, yeah, we don't hire white people because uh, we, uh, we feel it's unsafe. I'm not saying it's unsafe, even though I just said it's we microaggressions. Feel yeah. Of course it is. But microaggression, microaggression is the fucking gayest fucking word in the history right now. Because a microaggression can be attached to anything you want it to be. It's like an intersectionality in victimhood. Microaggression goes along with that. Because anything anybody says, any criticism, any opinion, any fucking foresight, anything that they bring to the table. Oh my God, microaggression. I think you better shut your face up. And that's why you get Phil Spencer coming out with a fucking samurai sword or a tato, tato and fucking gutting himself right in front of everyone going, yeah, you, we're, we're just going to start fucking everything up. By the way, we're also putting everybody else's fucking games on our platform because we have fucked up so miserably, but we're going to continue to fuck up and we will continue to close down gaming studios because we will be pushing this fucking bullshit until we're blue in the face and then we'll be going like, why are you racist? <laughs> yeah, it, when it comes to microaggressions, there, there's there's li look at these fucking women that are involved. In this. There's nothing micro about them. All right, most of them are you big fat fucks. Like, <laughs> yeah, the only micros involved are the micro dicks of any of the fucking gay dudes who are fucking part of this shit too. Wow, the difference uh -huh. in 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 this situation to me versus things like Hollywood, comics industry, all that shit is that the indie gaming market is so massive and you can walk away from AAA gaming right now and you can find a ton of games that you can yeah. enjoy you don't have that option in the in the you know hollywoods or anything like that and the game even within the and ryan mentioned this earlier but like even within the triple a industry there's it's it's all, all over spread the world. out yeah, yeah it's it's yeah. not like yeah. hollywood this, one is, the important, this is the importance of decentralization yes. of yes. entertainment yes. and yeah. why yes. it's important that more eastern entertainment is coming over here and catching on that's fucking great uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it'll people force people catching on to Korea. Yeah, yeah, and it's good. I, I think like a better story. People catching on to good stories is a good thing, and that's why uh, we talked about this, Jeremy, on the phone. Uh, that uh, this is like a winnable war. You know, the, like, not saying you're gonna win, but it's winnable because you have more options. Uh, yes. You know, the, like AAA games are going to do whatever fucking corporate shit is going to do, and hopefully it just fails. Well, well I think, mean, if you think, look at just like the recent success of something like Hell Divers or Power World, Divers, and yep. that that just that tells you everything you need to know about Lethal Company is a great example. Yep. One mm -hmm. person oh, made that. One. Yeah. yeah, one person. Wait, one dude mm -hmm. made that. Yeah, yep. well, a furry. It's so fun. So, a furry? Where is that? <laughs> but it was one person. Ryan's immediately not interested now. <laughs> but it, 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 it caught on. I wasn't, so, I wasn't yeah. listening, sorry. <laughs> he heard furry and his brain immediately erased it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it just like point. went back 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that's the difference in, in what's going on right now. And it's just... Again, man, you had the you had the global head of marketing for Xbox the other day put out this tweet. Oh, fine. Um, oh yeah. Where she was oh, like, yeah. you know, about and deleted the, it. The, yes, by the way, I was it. already blocked by her. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh. I was already, I was already blocked. By who? 
the the global head, head of marketing, uh, Kelly Lombardi, I think's her name. Well, yeah. it's, it's, it's only right because Dan baby. Vass started Gamergate 2 with your video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I and know, put it on I Twitter. You, I bet you that's when I got blocked. I bet you anything <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably when I got it. blocked. That's yeah. probably, probably it. it. Yeah. The thing is, though, what, what amazes me about that, right, is... Are they not aware what's going on in the yes. gaming community at the moment? Are they that oblivious? Are, yeah. In it, what world did you think that she wouldn't get blowback with all the, you know, pushback that the gaming community is having against this woke crap? And she thinks, I know what I'll do. Yeah. I'll throw this out there. <laughs> like, I, no, no, wait, here's a, no, but, but sh that's the reason she did it, Shad, is because yeah. of this war that's happening Tell right now. Ryan. Because game, games journalists are trying to gaslight everybody into thinking that women in games are under attack right now. Yes. So yeah, you have all these women the in the case. gaming industry who want to be fucking victims that are being like, I'm here, I'm queer, and I'm not going anywhere. Like, that, <laughs> like that's what they want right she now. She doesn't even have that many responses on this. This is the product of women leading Something yes. Yes. How yes. many times do we have to go through this? But this is, like this, Miller this, Life, <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> this is the same people who came up with the term toxic fandom. No dude came up with the term toxic fandom. That was no a woke white dude. woman. Mm -mm. No, no, well, no straight, straight dude. dude. No yeah. dude. That was a woman with bad ideas. That's who yeah. came up with that. One of the interesting things as well was like the idea that black girl gamers like send out, put this big threat. We're going to do this cease and desist. We're going to do all this shit, right? All it did, just like the Sweet Baby Inc. trying to take down Cabrutus, it just let everybody know what they are, what they do. I yep. wasn't going to cover the story because I missed out a few days ago on buying. I'm like, it's a little too late to do the Black Girl Gamer story. Then they went ahead and did something like that. It's like, all right, Black Girl Gamers, you're on my fucking <laughs> radar. You're about to get destroyed by everyone in this gaming sphere. Nerderotic.com Please subscribe.